moment, my brothers and sisters, I want to talk about uh, the wonder of God's timing. The wonder of God's timing. As the calendar year has transitioned once again, my brothers and sisters, this time from 2018 to 2019, we are um, in that time of year uh, where people often sit down to make resolutions, um, where they sit down to make promises for themselves about how they will uh, conduct and comport themselves throughout this year, how this year will be different from last year. We make all kinds of promises to ourselves about what we are going to do differently um, and how things are going to be better now than they were before. We're going to eat better. Uh, we're going to get more exercise. Uh, we're going to get more rest and relaxation. We're going to worry less. We're going to pray more. We're going to be more faithful in our church attendance or Bible study or our giving. All kinds of resolutions that we make uh, for ourselves, my brothers and sisters, uh, trying, to, uh, trying to make this year better than the year before. Um, and, my brothers and sisters, it is good. It's good to take advantage of the ebb and flow of the calendar year, um, not because there's anything uh, special or magical about the turning of the calendar or about the, uh, the uh, revolutions that the earth makes around the sun, my brothers and sisters, but it's just a good reminder for us, a time for us to reset our mind and refocus our energy. Uh, and those things are well and good, my brothers and sisters, but it is, uh, it's important for us to realize and recognize that in the midst of everything, um, that we are not just operating on a chronological calendar, uh, but that our lives are also measured by a divine calendar. Uh, that God has divine timing for us, for each and every one of our lives, my brothers and sisters. And as part of the work that we do to set resolutions for ourselves, to focus our lives on what it is that we want to do or how we want to be better this year, we ought not forget the fact uh, that God has a calling and a purpose for our lives. Mm. Um, in fact, if you do not get anything else from this message, I want you to know and understand that no matter who you are, no matter where you have been, no matter what experiences you have been through, God has a purpose for your life. Yes. Uh, my brothers and sisters, just as sure as you have breath in your body, uh, just as sure as you have a name, that God has a purpose that is assigned to you, that is unique as your fingerprint, my brothers and sisters, a purpose that only you are able to fulfill. God has a calling for you in your life, my brothers and sisters. And the Bible tells us over and over again uh, that purpose is not dictated by external judgments about readiness or appropriateness. Uh, in other words, my brothers and sisters, nobody can tell you when uh, or how or where you are ready to walk into your purpose, uh, that God's purpose for you uh, is on God's timing, not on the world's time. Uh, if you don't believe me, uh, just look at the king of Israel who stepped to the throne at eight years old. Uh, we have age limits for who can run for president. You can't run for president uh, until you reach a certain age, uh, my brothers and sisters. Uh, uh, and, uh, and while that is good, while that uh, is important because we think there's a wisdom and experience that ought to come with that, uh, my brothers and sisters, that God called a boy to be king at the age of eight. And the Bible said that God gave this boy uh, the wisdom to listen to the elders that gathered around so that he was wiser in his bull than his father and his father's father had been before him. Uh, my brothers and sisters, at the same time, we have uh, Abraham, Abraham and Sarah, uh, 
who were uh, at the age of retirement, the age when people are ready to settle down, the age when people are ready to stop working, the age when people are ready to just reap uh, the rewards of their labor. And God calls them into a new season of their life. God cancels their retirement plans and tells them you are about to give birth to a son. Uh, at the time when they should be doing the least amount of work, my brothers and sisters, they had the most amount of work left ahead of them because God still had something for them at that age. Uh, my brothers and sisters, I, I want you to know that God's timing is not a respecter of age or position, my brothers and sisters, but no matter who you are, no matter how old you are, from the youngest person in the room to the oldest person in the room, God still has purpose for you in your life, my brothers and sisters. Um, you're never too young to walk into God's purpose, and you're never old enough that you age out of God's purpose, my brothers and sisters. Uh, God's purpose does not have exempt clauses. Uh, it does not require, it does not exempt you for pre-existing conditions, my brothers and sisters, that God's purpose is universal. God's purpose calls each and every one of you. And the fact that you are here today on this first Sunday of 2019 is all the evidence I need to know that God has purpose for in your life. Uh, my brothers and sisters, so that in the list of resolutions that you make as you are figuring out how to walk into this new year, can I add one to your list if it isn't there already, my brothers and sisters? And I would simply ask that you would add to your list if you have not already to figure out, find out, pursue with as much energy and passion as you can what God's purpose is for this season in your life. Uh, my brothers and sisters, just a brief review of the life of Joseph will remind us that God has a purpose for us in each season of our life because Joseph's life is a, a lesson, my brothers and sisters, on the way seasons operate. When Joseph was young, when Joseph was just a kid, he was in a learning and growing season. And so he was there with his family, with his father and his brothers, and he had these dreams, these dreams of greatness. He knew that God was calling him to do something special. He knew that he could not be just like everybody else who was around him. He knew, uh, my brothers and sisters, and his father seemed to know too, because his father blessed him, gave him, treated him a little bit differently than he treated the other brothers people recognized that there was something special about Joseph, about the way he walked, the way he talked, the way he carried himself. Other people knew that there was something special about this young man, Joseph, and everybody didn't like him for it, but everybody had to recognize that there was something special about him. Uh, even when his brothers uh, laid, to, uh, laid a trap for him, uh, my brothers and sisters, when, uh, when they were preparing the trap for him, listen to how they talked about him. They said, here comes this dream. Let's kill him and see what happens to his dreams. Uh, uh, they had to recognize, even in their hate towards him, that there was something special about him, my brothers and sisters. And I want you to know, uh, my brothers and sisters, that the call that God has on your life, there are people who recognize it. Uh, people might not say it. They might not say it to you. They might never. Uh, they might never admit it to you, my brothers and sisters. But I want you to know that people see that there is something special about them. Uh, which is why you might not fit in in every crowd that you get around, my brothers and sisters. But that's okay because God has a calling for your life. Which is why people might look at you a little bit strange, my brothers and sisters, when you are going about your daily business. But that's okay because God has a purpose for your life. And my brothers and sisters, purpose means that sometimes we don't get to fit in everywhere. But don't worry about that because if you fit in everywhere, uh, my brothers and sisters, then it might diminish your ability to fulfill your purpose. But the fact that you have a purpose means that there is a special place that you are called, designed to fit in, my brothers and sisters. And so I would beg of you, I would beg of you, uh, uh, don't get weary in well-doing. Have patience, my brothers and sisters, because in God's time, the purpose will be revealed. Uh, uh, Joseph was in a learning and growing phase. He didn't fit 
stand with his brothers. He really didn't even really with his father and his family, my brothers and sisters. And so then Joseph is sold into slavery into Egypt. And he becomes the, uh, the general manager of Potiphar's house, the chief operating officer of Potiphar's house. Uh, Joseph is sold into slavery, but in that lands in a great position and is in charge of everything in Potiphar's house. Uh, but the people in Potiphar's house recognized that there was something special about Joseph, my brothers and sisters. And uh, so much so that Potiphar's wife tried to claim that specialness for herself. She tried to take hold of that and take advantage of uh, Joseph in his youth, uh, my brothers and sisters. Um, and uh, uh, Joseph had the sense to run away from it. Uh, but we ought to stop here. Allow me to point, put a pin in this uh, just to say, my brothers and sisters, um, uh, that expecting all young people to have the fortitude of Joseph to be able to run away from temptation is not a good expectation. <laughs> that we have to create a culture that empowers young people, yeah, yeah. that protects young people, yeah. my brothers and sisters, and not blames them uh, when people are yeah. putting expectations on. on them that are not befitting of them. I see somebody's looking at me crazy, so let me uh, say this in plain English. Uh, uh, the other day, uh, Lifetime uh, uh, aired the first of a series of documentaries about R. Kelly, uh, the so-called Pied Piper of R&B. Uh, now, uh, if you watch that uh, documentary, uh, it, is, it is very disturbing and troubling. And if you've read any of the accounts of the survivors of R. Kelly's madness, um, it is very disturbing and troubling because R. Kelly has had a habit throughout uh, all of his adult life of preying on teenagers, <laughs> of going to the high school that he grew up in, and taking advantage of teenage girls' innocence in naivete. Uh -huh taking advantage of teenage girls who were themselves living in and trying to battle through the challenges that poverty brings. And flashing his fame and flashing his money, um, he would attract these young girls and then ensnare them in his dark web of sexual deeds and force these young girls to commit acts that their bodies nor their minds were ready to perform. And many he had kidnapped and, uh, and forced to live in a compound where they were guarded and their lives were regulated when they could eat, what they could eat, who they could talk to. Everything about their lives was guarded. And if they dared to escape or try to contact others, they were threatened with their lives. And people died, my brothers and sisters, uh, because of this mess around our Kelly. Uh, and while this was playing, as these stories have become more pervasive, uh, my brothers and sisters, people are uh, blaming these young girls, uh, saying, well, they ought not have dressed in the way that they dressed. Well, they ought not have acted in the way that they acted. Uh, they were inviting that attention to themselves. Uh, and so they were looking for something. They were acting wrong. Uh, and they should not have been acting wrong, my brothers and sisters. Uh, and we've got to stand against that type of foolish nonsense, my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, that expecting kids to bear the responsibility for the actions of adults um, is an irresponsible action. Uh, we've got to create climates within the church especially um, in, in every public institution of our life, my brothers and sisters, where we protect the people who are the innocent, yeah. where we protect the people who are the most vulnerable, my brothers and sisters. Yeah. And I don't care how good you can sing lyrics. Oh I don't care if at one point in time when you were facing trial, you wrote one half of a gospel album. Oh I don't care how many times people get on the dance floor and dance in the name of love to your music. Yeah. Uh, that no amount of fame or no amount of talent or no amount of skill should exempt people from being held accountable for their actions. And as the church, my brothers and sisters, if we are going to be the church of Jesus Christ, we have to do what Jesus did. And if Jesus stopped the people from executing a woman who was set up to be caught in adultery, how much more would Jesus protect these young children who've been attacked and abused by a predator? In fact, I heard Jesus say that whoever uh, abuses these little child, it will be better 
Uh, you can only be responsible for your stewardship of what is in front of you. And there are times, my brothers and sisters, when God calls us to something new in front of us, and the things that are behind us, we have to let them go. Amen. Uh, the Apostle Paul reminds us of this when he says, uh, it's not like I have this all under control, not that I have already attained this, but this one thing I figured out how to do. I figured out how to leave those things that are behind. Yeah. And press forward towards those things that work. Joseph could not control Potiphar's house from prison. So he had to let Potiphar's house go. Joseph could not help out his parents or his siblings from prison. So he had to let them go. While Joseph was in prison, he had to be responsible for Joseph and for what was happening in the prison. Uh, my brothers and sisters, you can't carry everybody in every phase of your life. God has not equipped you to be anybody's packing mule. And so sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we enter into phases of our lives and people have placed expectations on us and you've got to let those expectations go. Uh, 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 old preacher used to tell uh, of a story of a cow that was uh, found itself in a ditch um, and after trying to help the cow out, dropping the rope down, hoping the cow would bite on the rope and he could pull the cow to safety. After trying to wrap the rope around the cow and trying to lift the cow to safety, the farmer having no other way uh, to get rid of the cow, couldn't uh, bring it in his heart to shoot the cow. And so he just tries to bury the cow. He just takes and figures he's just going to pour the dirt over the cow, bury the cow in the ditch, my brothers and sisters. And as he poured the dirt over the cow, every time the dirt hit the cow's back the cow would just shake off the dirt and stamp it under his feet. And then uh, the, the farmer would shovel more dirt on the cow and the cow would shake the dirt off and stamp it under its feet. And uh, the old preacher would say before long, uh, uh, the level of the hole began to rise. The cow began ascending bit by bit because every time the farmer would shovel more dirt on the cow and shake it off and stamp it under its feet. And before the day ended, my brothers and sisters, the hole had risen to the point that the cow was able to walk up on its own because it refused to be buried under the dirt that the farmer put on his back, my brothers and sisters. What I want to tell you is that when people are putting all of these unfair, unjust expectations on you, my brothers and sisters, that don't align with what God is calling you to do, sometimes you just gotta shake it off and stuff it under your feet. Joseph couldn't be in the prison who he was at Potiphar's house. He could not be in the prison who he was in the parents' house. His focus had to shift. Yeah. But in each place, God was faithful. Yeah. And the Bible says two years after he should have gotten out, All right. now Pharaoh has a dream. Yeah. Pharaoh tells a dream to his magicians, to his wise uh, men to his soothsayers, and none of them are able to interpret the dream. And then the cupbearer, who's always at the side of Pharaoh, says, today, I remember what I should have never forgotten. Uh, that when I was in prison, uh, I had a dream, and somebody uh, uh, interpreted my dream for me, let me know I was going to be here, and I promised I would never forget but I forgot until this. You want to know why we do testimonies, my brothers and sisters? You want to know why we take time in service to share testimonies with one another? Because sometimes you need a space and time to say the thing that you should have never forgotten in the first place. But sometimes the key to what you need to move forward and what God is calling you is in that testimony that you have in the past. And because sometimes when we get dressed up and come to church, we want to forget those things that we did in the past. We want to forget the places that God brought us out of. We want to forget the situations where nobody was there but God and God ran away. But sometimes we need to tell those stories. Sometimes we need to share that testimony. Sometimes we need to let someone else know, my brothers and sisters, because the key to their deliverance and eventually the key to your deliverance might be in that testimony that you should have never forgot in the first place. The cupbearer says, Pharaoh, I now have, I now remember this testimony. 
testimony. That I shouldn't have forgotten. When I was in jail, there was somebody who interpreted my dreams. And maybe this young man can interpret your dreams. So then Pharaoh calls Joseph, my brothers and sisters, he calls Joseph out of uh, the prison and calls him to come and lays out his dream before him. Uh, and Joseph interprets the dream, my brothers and sisters. And not only does he interpret the dream, but Joseph does something that he isn't even called to do in this moment. Uh, Joseph interprets the dream, but then also lays out a plan for how Pharaoh can take advantage of the knowledge that God has given him. And how does Joseph do this, my brothers and sisters? Well, if you look at this carefully, you'll see that Joseph has done a great job of synthesizing all of the experiences that he has had up until this point. Um, he knew how to interpret dreams because God gave him dreams at an early age when he was at his parents' house. Amen. He knew how to be a manager and what a manager would do and how a manager should act based upon his time at Potiphar's house and then in the prison. All right. uh, my brothers and sisters. And so he takes all of these experiences and puts them together to not only interpret Pharaoh's dream, but to put together a business plan for Pharaoh on how Pharaoh should uh, uh, treat the coming years of plenty, knowing that famine is coming. Um, brothers and sisters, what I'm simply trying to tell you is that uh, none of the experiences that you have gone through are wasted experiences. Uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, Michael Jordan was once noted for saying, um, I don't ever lose. I either win or I learn. But I don't ever lose. Uh, my brothers and sisters, what I'm trying to tell you is that none of the experiences that God has brought you through should you consider a loss. Uh, either you won, my brothers and sisters, or there was a lesson to be learned. Uh, but none of it is a loss, my brothers and sisters. Uh, but in each situation, you ought to be figuring out, God, what is it that I can learn from these experiences to help set me up for the next thing you are calling me to do? So Joseph takes all of these experiences, puts a business plan before Pharaoh, my brothers and sisters, and then Pharaoh elevates Joseph. From being a prisoner to being the vice president of the United States of Egypt. Now, my brothers and sisters, if I had uh, longer to preach, I would tell you that this is uh, an important message about um, uh, why we ought not ban people who have prison experience from holding jobs. Because God has purpose even for those people who have been behind bars, yes. my brothers and sisters. If I, had, uh, uh, if I had more time, I would preach to you about uh, how this, uh, uh, this scripture is a message about the importance of uh, managing your blessings when you get them. Yes. Because despite what some preachers would have you believe, every season is not your season to be blessed. Every season is not going to be your season of abundance. Every season, God is not going to open up the windows of heaven and put out more blessings than you can receive. Some seasons, you have to learn how to live on what God blessed you with in the last season. And so learning how to manage your blessings when you get them is important to help you navigate the season that's coming when those blessings seem few and far in between. Uh, but I don't have time, so I'm not going to preach that today, my brothers and sisters. What I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, is that despite the ups and downs in Joseph's life, despite the in and outs, despite the good times and bad times, God had a plan for Joseph, and God was faithful to bring Joseph to the time that God had planned for him. In the moment when the country needed him the most, in the time when God's people needed him the most, in the time when even his family would need him the most, that is when God brought Joseph to the place of his destiny, my brothers and sisters. And because Joseph did not pursue the 
destiny. Because Joseph pursued faithfulness to God. God was faithful to Joseph and led Joseph to his destiny. Uh, brothers and sisters, what I'm simply trying to tell you is that uh, you do not have to fall into the world's trap uh, of figuring out your own, uh, uh, trying to uh, go out and pursue and uh, get your own blessings for yourself. Uh, just because God has given you a vision, my brothers and sisters, doesn't mean that God is requiring you to figure out for yourself how to bring that vision into pass. Uh, what God requires you to do, my brothers and sisters, is to be faithful in the place where God has placed you. Yes, yes. Uh, to be responsible for what God has given you. Yes. And as you are able to be responsible in that situation, my brothers and sisters, God will lead you to the places where you need to go so that you will eventually get to your destiny, my brothers and sisters. And it might not happen in the time you think it should happen. It might not happen in the time that you want it to happen, uh, but it will happen in the time when it's supposed to happen because we're not operating on chronological time. We're not operating on calendar time, but we are operating on God's divine time, my brothers and sisters. And in God's time, uh, things happen the way they are supposed to if we are faithful, my brothers and sisters. Joseph was faithful everywhere he went. And at the end of the day, my brothers and sisters, all of the people who looked down on Joseph now had to look up to him. All of the people who wrote Joseph off, my brothers and sisters, now had to come to Joseph for handouts. All of the people that Joseph could not care for in the other phases of his life, he was able to provide for while still providing for himself. Why? Because he trusted God in God's time. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know that God's timing is better than our time. God's timing is better than ours, my brothers and sisters. God's plan for your life is better than the plans you have for yourself, my brothers and sisters. And so as we enter into 2019, even if the year did not end the way you wanted it to, and even if 2019 is getting off to a rockier start than you expected it to, my brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you that you are still operating on God's time. And if you can find it in your heart, if you can find it in your spirit, if you can find the strength in your body to be faithful to what God has placed in front of you, then God, my brothers and sisters, God will bring you to that place. God will lead you, my brothers and sisters. The same God that was with Joseph in his parents' house in the pit and Pilate's house in the prison brings Joseph to the palace and God is with him there in the palace. And that same God is with you, my brothers and sisters. In every mountaintop and in every valley of your life, in every hill and every low place in your life, my brothers and sisters, even if you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God is right there with you. God is with you, my brothers and sisters. And I just believe, my brothers and sisters, I, I believe in the depths of my heart. I believe in the stillness of my spirit. I believe on this Sunday, the first Sunday of 2019, that if God had the strength to bring you to your situation, my brothers and sisters, that God has the strength to bring you through. Which is why I can give God praise right now. Because even though it might not look the way I want to look right now, I know that God is good to me, so I can give God praise. I can say hallelujah right now. Because even though everything might not be lined up the way I want it to be lined up, I can praise God because I know God is with me still working it out. I can say glory to your name right now. Because I believe that the same God that was with me in 2014 and 15, the same God that brought me to 2016 and 17, the same God that was with me in January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December of 2018, the same God that was with me on January 1st of 2019, uh, January 2nd, on my birthday of January 3rd, on January 4th, on my 